None of these buildings were placed by hand. This city is entirely procedurally generated. I did this using an algorithm known as wave function collapse. Let me explain. So I've been trying to complete a video game in under one month, and for the final week I needed a proper city. Now I could spend five hours placing it by hand, or 12 hours coding a system to generate the buildings myself, and since luckily I'm bad at math, I'll teach you how I generated this, and if you keep watching, I'll let you know how you can get the code to do this yourself. It can be a little confusing looking at these city blocks, so let's start with a simpler example. Say we have three different tiles, a grass tile, a straight road, and a curved road. Our goal is to generate a grid-like map for our game, and this generation needs to make sense. Roads need to connect to roads, grass connects to grass, etc. In order to translate this rule into something that the computer can understand, let's label the sides of the tiles. The grass block is simple with the X positive, X negative, Z positive, and Z negative sides all being grass. For a straight road, the positive and negative X are both road, while the positive and negative Z are both grass. And for the corner, grass on the positive X and Z, while negative X and Z are both road. Now we want to be able to rotate these tiles when we place them so that the road can rotate any which direction. Now where it gets tricky is if we want to rotate it 90 degrees, now we have road on the negative X, positive Z, and grass on the positive X, negative Z. I think you can see here that if I were to manually input all the different rotations and codes, it would be very easy to make a mistake that would throw off our entire algorithm. So what I'm going to do instead is to write some code to generate four copies of each one of these three prefabs, all with a different rotation. Each one of these generated copies comes with a scriptable object that holds the rotation along with all their side info. Now that we have these 12 possible tiles, let's look at a simple 3x3 grid. Any of the 12 squares can fit in any of the grid placements. Now let's collapse one grid placement at random to start. With this one cell collapsed, we will then propagate the new conditions to the neighboring cells, and since the center cell has grass to the X negative, we will remove any of those prototypes for that cell that do not have a grass socket in their positive X to connect with our collapsed cell. This process repeats for the remaining cells in contact with our collapsed cell, and once that is done, we select the next cell to collapse. To do this, we select the cell with the lowest entropy, and since entropy just means disorder or randomness, we are going to select the cell with the fewest amount of options. In this case, it's the cell immediately to the right. We pick a random prototype from those six that remain, and then propagate again, removing any prototypes that are unable to connect. We then repeat this process again and again as we collapse all the cells until we are left with a completed grid with roads that make sense. Since it's all done procedurally, it's easy enough to regenerate this grid and make it say 5x5 five five or 10x10. Ten ten. We can even add more tiles. So instead of the 12 options, let's bump it up to, well, I don't know, 32. Let's add some intersections, bridges, rivers, and then get to generating. Now it's looking phenomenal. Now let's translate what we've learned and do the exact same thing with these city blocks that I created. I had a little bit of trouble setting them up at first as I tried generating it using roads as sides, but it wound up being much cleaner and easier to just make larger prefabs such as intersections and turns and run with those. Also generated this little ring around all of our tiles with uh, dead ends to prevent the player from walking out of the game. Then I went through the initial tiles and added multiple building prefabs to each block and attached a script to set a random one active when it's generated. So this creates a bit more diversity so that not all the intersections look the same. And I'd love to add more variety, but there are only three days left and I'm trying to get this done on time, so let's blitz through the rest of the updates. Also, I came up with a logo from our game, and yes, it looks like a five-year-old drew it, but I decided not to go to art school because I hate working in a restaurant. I also went through the whole process of setting up a store page on Steam. Surely, this is not going to lead to massive issues later. Regardless, let's take some time to clean up a few of the more egregious bugs. You may have noticed that the buildings will block the view of the player if you get too close to them. So after Googling a bit, I was able to write a shader to fade the buildings when it blocks line of sight to the player. So now you have a pretty good view and can see what's going on at all times. Another thing we need to add is sound. So I added some sound effects to the guns when they fire. And there's also a new sound that plays when you level up. A few different sounds for a few different guns and also a reload sound. Some grunts for when the player gets hit. And then added some background music to fit the theme. Feels like it's all starting to come together. 
Also, building off all that meta progression we did two weeks ago, remember we're going to give out credits to the player based on how long they survive? Well, we need to come up with a formula to reward our player for this. What we don't want is a simple function that just rewards the player X amount per minute survived. If this was the case, surviving for five minutes twice would grant you the same amount of points as surviving to 10 minutes once, even though surviving to 10 is way harder. So to resolve this, we're going to write a formula that makes the reward exponential uh, up to a point. This is to reward the player increasing amounts as they survive longer. Uh, we don't want it to be purely exponential though, or it would result in infinite money. So here's a quick mock-up that I did showing the amount of rewards you get for the amount of time you survive. And here's what happens when the player dies. Um, it kicks you back to the menu and shows you your basic stats and rewards you. There's tons of other minor bugs that I fixed that uh, I don't want to get into too much detail in, but one that I will mention is that we had an issue with the AI where they would get stuck behind the buildings and couldn't pathfind to the player since we're using very, very simple pathfinding. Uh, that was due to the spawn zones just being way too big. So now if a enemy is too far from the player, it will teleport it right outside of the player's field of view. Alrighty, so time for some good news and some bad news. Uh, good news is it is uploaded to itch.io. Uh, bad news is we can't upload to Steam because uh, I got some feedback on my store page and um, yeah, few issues I got to take care of before I can make it live on Steam. Um, this will take a little Jeremy. I thought you were supposed to be the cool guy. Regardless, it wouldn't truly be authentic cyberpunk unless it was delayed. But unlike CD Projekt Red, I wasn't planning on making any money. Since I don't like taking responsibility for my time management and would rather blame Steam, I've uploaded the game to itch.io where you can download and play it in all of its glory, minus the Steam achievements. We have hit our one month deadline, so I'm going to upload it in its current state. Uh, I'm sure there may be one or two bugs that I might have missed, so I'll try to fix those if anything major pops up. Otherwise, uh, to make up for not putting it on Steam, I linked the entire project script down below. I can't upload the whole project because I'm using a bunch of paid assets, but feel free to take any and all of the code and do whatever you want with it. Would make a huge difference though if you like the video, so please do that. And if you want to see more challenges in the future, definitely subscribe. Love you guys.